What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. Today's segment, and I'm using this as, um, this is going to be very sensitive content, very sensitive. So I just want to let everyone know when you're entering the room that this content is very sensitive. It may be a trigger to some. So if it's going to be a trigger, I advise that you would leave. Um, So that way, you know, I just don't want to have any issues with later on that if this is triggering to you. So I'm just giving a warning to those who are coming in. Thanks, first of all, for uh, joining me today in this segment. I want to be very transparent about this because, as you can see, the title says this happens to one in six men. One in six men, right? I was, uh, what inspired me to do this video was Lewis Howes, the podcaster at uh, School of Greatness. I listen to his podcast regularly and he was talking about the uh, sexual abuse that he, he went through as a child. And then I heard his story and then I'm a big Kendrick Lamar fan. You all know how much I love Kendrick and he talked about basically this like sexual abuse in Mother I Sober. And the song was so powerful. And he talked about maybe sexual abuse in another song. I can't remember the title, but he was talking about if R. Kelly would have got the necessary help that he needed because he was sexually abused. Um, so I was like, wow. So shout out to Kendrick Lamar for talking about such a sensitive uh, topic and also to Lewis Howes as well, but it's really personal in the black community because we, I know for me, I'm 45 years old. I grew up in the era of, you know, what goes on in this house, stay in this house or, uh, don't tell anybody all these different things. But I remember being sexually abused at seven, like this happened to me in my personal life. And when you go through something like that at seven years old, you don't know how to process those things. And uh, especially if it's of the same sex, because there are some people, uh, there are some men who've been as boys sexually abused uh, from women, but then there are some men, uh, some boys who've been sexually abused by men. And I was sexually abused by, you know, somebody who was older than me. So, going through that whole process, sometimes you just don't know how to deal with it. Cause at seven, you have so many different feelings and emotions going on. And you just like, I don't know how to process this. Right. And it took me years to try to figure things out because I put it so far back in my memory that once I started to go to therapy and shout out to my therapist, she helped me to unearth some things and to help me to get healing. So a lot of times people Uh, They wonder, how can you forgive somebody for doing such a thing to you? And my response was more of chances are it probably happened to them, right? It probably happened to them. So all they're doing is perpetuating what happened to them onto others. So this is why I think uh, because when I was talking to my therapist, she talked about how with men, men, we take out our aggression on other people. And with women, women internalize their pain. You know, women hold it in. But men, we, that's why, you know, we always hurting other people because we don't know how to deal with the aggression or the things that has possibly happened to us growing up as kids. We don't know how to process it. So when you become an adult, you become so emotionally stifled where you don't know how to process things, right? You don't know how to process your feelings because all you can say is we're limited to, I'm mad, I'm upset, I'm irritated, I'm pissed off. But let's dig deeper. Like, what does those, can you dig deeper and say how you really feel about maybe I felt shamed, uh, maybe I felt vulnerable, maybe I felt scared, maybe I felt alone. And when you start using deeper words to converse with someone about how you're feeling, I think that's when you're able to have a deeper conversations. I think that's when you're able to dig deeper and get to the root of a problem opposed to just, I'm mad, I'm pissed off. 
you know, because that's triggering to other people. And then people don't want to talk with you because you don't know how to process your feelings in a healthy way. So this website is uh, one, the number one in I N six, the number six dot org. It's a great website. So to any men who have been sexually abused, I would advise that you go to this website because it is very, very helpful. Uh, I, I've done this before in my speech class when I was in college and I decided to share my story with the with the speech class when I, when I was in school. And I believe that it was really able to help somebody, again, one in six men who've been sexually abused. Uh, and a lot of people won't come forth about it, but I said, well, let me make sure that I am able to help one man. If I'm able to help one man, then I have done my job. One in six dot org. They say because and if there's ladies that's watching this, I want to say this as well. The reason why I want you to watch it is because you don't know what your man has been through. You know, y'all might have had shallow conversations. And if he ever tried to open up, and I'm not saying this is all, but maybe if he's tried to open up to you before about other things that's stressing him out, if he feel if he feels shut down or uh, he felt like he's not being heard, he's really not going to talk to you about being sexually abused. Right. So and that's a deeper topic. So that's why I want the ladies to watch this as well, because. Sometimes we can easily throw men away, but we don't know what they actually go through. And on this website of one in six dot org, they talk about some of these things. It says men who have been sexually abused as a child experience problems in many areas, including number one, self-esteem, number two, relationships, number three, regulating emotions and impulses. And that's why I struggled at because I would just make a decision, just be impulsive. I'll make a decision if I'm mad about something and that's it. And I think twice about it. And I didn't realize that until my wife had brought that to my attention. She was like, don't make emotional decisions, especially if you're pissed, you know, don't, don't do that. And it was something I haven't realized, but now looking at this, I'm like, Oh, that was, that was me. I was, I wasn't able to regulate my emotions and my impulses, especially when it came to decision making and how I would treat others. Cause I would cut you off in a New York minute. You know, all you had is one chance to mess up with me and that was it, but that's not always healthy. So that was something that I struggled with. And even when I was younger, I struggled with self-esteem uh, because I was overweight um, in, in those things, you know? So when you're dealing with a kid being overweight, it's just like, everybody else is smaller than you, you know, and you're like the fat kid being picked on, you know, so I struggled with the self-esteem. The next one is alcohol and drug abuse and addictions. So again, if you have a man who's dealing with these things, and again, I'm not saying that he has been sexually abused. I'm just saying that this could be a possibility and he don't know how to deal with that anger or that pain, especially when it comes to drugs and alcohol abuse and addictions. And then it also says school and work performance that affects a man as well. Depression and also behavior, uh, behavioral addictions. And that's in either porn or gambling. So those are just some of the things that I've seen while doing my research on this one in six dot org website. That is very helpful to men who might have been through that uh, sexual abuse. I think it would really help those who might have been through it. They even have a. Uh, a hotline open. You can even either email or call them if you just need somebody to talk to. I think it's a great tool for men. And I think we don't talk about it enough. The interesting thing about uh, men being sexually abused and that one in six men who have been sexually abused, statistics read 40% of those who abused them were women. And I found that to be interesting. And I was like, I need to do more research on that. So in the one in six men who've been sexually abused, that the 40 percent of those have been women who were actually sexually abusing the 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 young boy at, you know, during this time. And that's under age 18. So I found that to be quite interesting. I would love to do more research on that. But if anyone have any questions, feel free to go ahead before I shut it down. I just wanted to share this because I feel that 
men need a safe place to vent, especially when it comes to sexual abuse, because that's something that we don't discuss as men. So Lord knows what your man could be possibly going through. And he's never told anybody. And you're wondering why he might have these addictions or why he possibly can't keep a job or just all these different things. It possibly could be that he's been sexually abused. So if you can, if, if he can, then uh, he can go to the website at one and six dot org. And this isn't a sponsorship. I'm just saying how good the content is and also getting therapy, too. I think that's very important because it helped me. Uh, what happened to the guys who are sexually abused by other guys? Now, the research behind that is I haven't done any extensive research, so I really don't want to go in depth about that because I do believe being well, I could be wrong, but I think if a man has been sexually abused when he was a kid by a woman, I think he might, I won't say take more pride, but I think he's more open to sharing that story. I remember listening to Charlemagne the God one day, him and uh, I think Denzel Curry, he's a rapper. Denzel Curry was on, there was on the breakfast club and uh, Charlemagne, he, he was saying, yeah, I was sexually abused by a woman and Denzel didn't want to talk about it because there's a certain amount of shame that comes with that. But being sexually abused from another man, very few people are willing to talk about that because you hear about the, the teachers in the high school, say if it's a woman who might have had a sexually abused a young man, that kind of thing. Um, guys almost kind of look at that as like, oh, you were sleeping with an older woman. Like, oh, like that's lit. Like guys look at that like that opposed to when they get older, they realize the, the implications that comes with being a sexually abused by a woman opposed to um, a man being sexually abused by another man or when you're a kid, that kind of thing. So I think those who've been sexually abused by another man or there's a little more shame or there's a little more st stigma to it opposed to being by uh the website is the number one in i n the number six dot org i'll make sure to uh tag that because i'm going to post this on youtube as well it's the number one i n one n six number six dot org so make sure you check that out and you just never know that if you're willing to have the deeper conversation, you never know who you could set free, especially when it comes to men. Because I think men get a bad rap a lot of times for being emotionally immature and not emotionally intelligent. Um, but it could be that my this he might have been sexually abused. Again, one in six uh, uh, boys have been sexually abused. So I think it's something that we need to talk about more often and let's kind of make it normal because there's so many people that has possibly went through this and it's like, what goes on in this house, stay in this house kind of thing, like I said earlier. But I just hope this video was able to help someone. Is there any more questions before I leave? Because I didn't want to make this too long. I just wanted to bring some awareness to those who um, possibly have been through it or being able to share this video with another man who might have been through the process. Uh, I believe forgiveness is real. You know, I, I forgave the person who I was sexually abused by and I'm able to to be free. Do I still think about it? Does it still, you know, in my mind sometimes I still think about it? It's like, yeah, it's like, man, you know, especially listening to people like Lewis Howes and listening to like Kendrick Lamar and the Mother I Sober song, you know, it kind of takes me back to a place. But I said I have to be able to share my story to help other people. Uh, as well. So if there aren't any more questions, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel because the full video will be there on my YouTube channel as well. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and, and share this with someone. You just never know because he might look good on the outside, but you do not know what's going on with him in the inside. You don't, you don't have any idea of what he's fighting on the inside. So share this with another man. You never know. This is Sean Heineman that is scary to remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. I am your premier pre-engagement coach. Take care, people.